I captured photos and video at Taylor Swift's Eras Tour concert. Some of them were captured using an iPhone and some were captured with a compact camera. I wanted to find out if there was an advantage of having a compact camera or if an iPhone was all I needed. Was one better than the other? Which one would I recommend? You can't bring professional cameras into a concert usually, and a professional camera is usually something with an interchangeable lens like this Nikon Z9, um, but there are other cameras like the Nikon P1000 which have a fixed lens but are quite big, and I'm sure they wouldn't let you take those in either. I will be comparing the Panasonic Lumix TZ220, also known as the ZS220 in North America, to an iPhone 15 Pro Max. I'll explain what I was looking for in a compact camera because there are a lot of examples out there and why I chose this specific Lumix camera, but before I do that, I want to show you some examples. Here's an example of video captured with my iPhone 15 Pro Max. So here you can see my perspective from where I was viewing the concert. I was on the floor, but I was further away. This is captured with a wide angle lens and you can see Taylor in the bottom part of the screen. Looking at the map, I was in section PD1, so I wasn't tremendously close. But when I zoom my iPhone to its maximum five times zoom, it got me pretty close as you can see. Let's start by looking at the zoom of both cameras. The first thing you will notice is that the Lumix has a longer zoom lens. It has the equivalent of a 360 millimeter focal length with an aperture of f6.4, while the iPhone 15 Pro Max has an equivalent focal length of 120 millimeters when used at its longest five time zoom setting with an aperture of f2.8. So you can get quite a bit closer with the Lumix. Here's another image captured with an iPhone 15 Pro Max with a five time zoom. And this is the Lumix at maximum zoom. This is a JPEG right out of the camera and I manually exposed the shot. I did find that the Lumix worked better when I used manual exposure, although you can see that I underexposed this image a little bit. So I've increased the overall exposure of the Lumix image to make up for my manual underexposure. And here is the iPhone image, which has been enlarged to approximately the same size as the Lumix. If you do want to crop your photos even more, the image quality will suffer. There's a lot more detail in the Lumix image than in the iPhone image. And when you're even closer, the difference in quality is very clear. These are both JPEG images and the Lumix actually has a lot more detail. But let's compare when they are zoomed to the same distance. I tried to zoom the Lumix to around the same distance as the iPhone 15 Pro Max for this set of images. And they are both decent. The Lumix has done a better job dealing with the bright spotlights hitting Taylor's shiny dress. Once again, this is probably because I was shooting the Lumix in manual exposure mode. So when it comes to zoom, the Lumix has the advantage. The next thing I want to talk about is image quality. When it comes to camera sensors, generally speaking, the larger the sensor, the better it is, especially in situations where there isn't a lot of light. The two cameras have different size sensors. The Lumix has a 20.1 megapixel sensor, which measures 13.2 millimeters by 8.8 .8 millimeters. The iPhone 15 Pro Max has a sensor that is 9.8 millimeters by 7.3 millimeters and is up to 48 megapixels. However, this 48 megapixel option isn't available for all the lenses on the iPhone. Here is the ultra wide angle 0.5 times zoom lens for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And this is the two times zoom lens. And finally, the five times zoom lens. When you use any of these lenses, the maximum megapixels available to you drops from 48 megapixels to 12 megapixels. So you can only capture 48 megapixel images when using the regular lens. This isn't super helpful at a concert when I'm far away. On the other hand, you will always have the 20.1 megapixels of the Lumix camera no matter which zoom you are using from 24 millimeters up to 360 millimeters. The aperture of the Lumix will vary and it is smaller when you zoom to 360 millimeters, so that will affect your ability to capture images in low light, but it still works. So when it comes to image quality, the larger sensor with a constant 20.1 megapixels gives the advantage to the Lumix. Let's take a look at how the Lumix and the iPhone did with exposure. The iPhone is really easy to adjust brightness by dragging your finger up or down. However, when things are really dark and there are spotlights, exposure can at times be difficult for cameras with automatic exposures like the iPhone. There were times when this would happen where Taylor would almost glow. Even when I reduced the exposure by dragging down my finger, it might or might not fix the problem. Usually I would have to tap the screen and reset it and try again and that would work. These images were captured from a different and closer vantage point on a different night. I shot the Lumix in manual mode the whole time, so I didn't get that glow that sometimes happens with the iPhone. This example is with the Lumix zoomed less, and this is with the Lumix zoomed more. These are shown as JPEGs as they are captured. I haven't done any editing. Here is the edited image on the right. 
The Lumix actually allows me to capture a RAW image and a JPEG image at the same time. I edited the RAW image because there's more information stored in the RAW image. I will talk about RAW photos a little later. However, the Lumix is so much more fiddly to get things right. You really have to know how to manually set the exposure and adjust your ISO with the Lumix. Even though the iPhone would sometimes overexpose and give the glowing subject, it worked really well most of the time and was easy to adjust. So when it comes to exposure, I would actually give the advantage to the iPhone because it was just so much easier. Let's take a quick look at video on the Lumix and the iPhone. One of the big benefits of the iPhone is that I can capture video and also capture photos at the same time. This video and the next video were captured from a closer perspective on the other side of the stage. They do a really good job illustrating the quality of the image when also capturing video. Here is a series of photos captured while capturing video. The first one isn't sharp. There's that glow that can sometimes happen with exposure. However, the next one is sharp and looks great. In the last image, you will notice that the photo is actually sharper and has better details than the video. So when capturing an image, it doesn't look like just a screen grab of the video. It is probably because the iPhone has processed this JPEG to make it even better. There is something else that I find really interesting. I've done my best to line up the frames using the lights in the background. You can see the one just under Taylor's dress and the one behind her and under her elbow. These frames are lined up exactly. Now look at the left side of the frame of the photo. You can see blonde hair and much more of the dress of one of the people walking behind Taylor. These don't show up in the video capture. But now look at the right side of the frame. There is a light right at the edge of the frame and when you compare that to the video, the same light is not on the edge of the frame but in the frame quite a bit. I'm not sure what's going on here. The video was panning from left to right and maybe that had something to do with this phenomenon. Here's something else that I find interesting. Both of these images were captured using the five times zoom of my iPhone 15 Pro Max. The top image was captured using the, just the camera and the bottom image was captured while also capturing video. When you capture a photo while capturing video, the image is in a different format. The iPhone's default format for photos is four by three while the format for video is 16 by nine. So when capturing photos on the iPhone at the same time you're capturing videos, the photos will be 16 by nine. You can always change the photo format on the iPhone to 16 by nine if you want. Here's the really interesting part. If I enlarge the four by three image to the same dimensions as the 16 by nine image, you will notice that the 16 by nine image that was captured while capturing video is slightly more zoomed even though both of them were captured at five times zoom. The size of files of a photo captured at the same time you capture video is smaller. So there is a trade-off. Let's take a look at some sample videos from the Lumix and the iPhone. I'll be honest, the iPhone was way easier to use when it comes to video. I basically just needed to point and record and it worked really well. There were times when I needed to adjust the exposure of the iPhone and darken the video, but the autofocus always worked extremely well. And like I already mentioned, I could also capture photos while also capturing video with the iPhone. On the other hand, the Lumix could zoom closer than the iPhone, but it was so much more work to use. Sometimes the long zoom of the Lumix was difficult to keep steady. As you can see, the auto exposure didn't always work. So I had to set the exposure manually. Not only that, but I had to focus manually because the autofocus and low light was terrible when it came to video. When I wasn't zoomed, used manual exposure and manual focus, it worked pretty well. I really had to pay attention to the screen and I felt like I was watching the camera instead of watching the concert in front of me. So when it comes to video, I would say that the iPhone has a big advantage. It just worked and I didn't need to fiddle around with the settings. I had easy options for zooms and switching between them was easy and I could capture photos at the same time. Let's take a look at the advantage of capturing raw files. Both the Lumix and the iPhone can capture raw files. These two images were captured with the Lumix and they are the same because the Lumix can capture a raw image and a JPEG at the same time. The file size of this JPEG is seven megabytes while the raw file is 23.4 megabytes. When you capture an image as a JPEG, the camera tries to reduce the size of the file to save space on your memory card. When you capture a RAW file, all the information that comes into the camera is recorded. So this means that RAW files take up way more space on your camera. But because there's more information stored in the RAW file, it can have a greater dynamic range, meaning more details in the shadows and highlights of an image. You also have more control over the white balance. 
you might notice that the colors are slightly different and that is because the camera has processed the JPEG while the RAW file hasn't been processed. It is important to note that the resolution of your images is still the same. Both of these images are 20.1 megapixels. The file sizes are different, but it's the same number of megapixels. However, in that process of reducing the file size, the quality of the image can be affected. Let's take a closer look. You may notice that the raw image looks like it has grain while the JPEG is smoother with less grain, but the smoothing of the JPEG takes away detail. You can see it in Taylor's hair. It doesn't look as sharp. So if I capture a JPEG, the camera will process the file for me and I'm stuck with what the camera does. But when I edit a raw image, I can adjust and work with the original information. I like to think of it as a cake. A JPEG is a cake that has been baked and I can put icing on it and decorate it and try to adjust it a bit, but I'm adjusting something that is already baked. A raw file is like I have all the ingredients of the cake and I can go back to the beginning and change the way I baked it and make adjustments to the ingredients. I have more control over the final product with a raw file. On the Lumix, this JPEG is 5.8 megabytes, while the raw file is 23.4 megabytes. So in this case, the raw file is about four times larger. The actual size of a JPEG will vary because it depends on how much the camera is able to reduce the file size from shot to shot in different conditions. When it comes to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, this JPEG is 2.3 megabytes, while this RAW file is 14.1 megabytes. When I was capturing images, the RAW files on the iPhone were six to seven times larger than the JPEGs. Something else to note is that you can't capture a JPEG and a RAW file at the same time on an iPhone. And when you're capturing video on an iPhone, you also can't capture a RAW file. But both devices will capture RAW files when taking photos and you should take advantage of that. So let's take a look at why I chose this specific Lumix camera, the TZ220, also known as the ZS220 in North America. There are so many compact cameras out there, why would I choose this one? Well, first thing is I wanted a camera that I could take into the event. So that meant it needed to be a compact point and shoot camera. Um, and you need to check with the event and with the venue because rules may vary and you might not even be allowed to take in a camera like this. Uh, so what about the features of the camera? Well, one of the most important features that I wanted was I wanted a camera with a longer zoom lens. My iPhone 15 Pro Max has a five times zoom, which is the equivalent of a 120 millimeter lens. And I wanted something that would go further than that. So this on the long end will give me a 360 millimeter zoom lens. So it really has a great reach. And so that was the first thing. Second thing that I really wanted was I wanted a camera with a larger sensor. Generally speaking, the larger the sensor, the better the quality of the image, especially in low light. And a lot of the compact cameras out there, they might have these long zoom lenses, but they actually have a much smaller sensor. The sensor in here is 13.2 millimeters by 8.8 .8 millimeters. And it's also known as a one inch sensor. It's a 20.1 megapixel sensor and it's great. So that large sensor was really important to me. The third thing that I wanted was I wanted something that would shoot raw files. Raw files are going to give me a lot more flexibility when I'm editing. And so this will shoot raw files and JPEGs at the same time. Finally, I wanted something that was compact and easy to carry around. And you can see this is great for carrying this around. So when I had all those criteria of the long zoom lens, the large sensor, compact and raw, there weren't a lot of options out there actually, but the Lumix was perfect for this job. I also wanted to say, don't forget to capture other photos that will help to tell the whole story. Show the venue, show the crowd. It's great to have those zoomed in photos, but it's also really cool to show the scale of the event with the crowd. This gives context to your images and provides variety. When there are screens that are part of the show, use them to help tell your story. They can help to set the mood for your images. Be aware of the lights and the special effects because they can make for interesting photos. Use foreground interest for more variety and use the sea of other people's phones for even more types of photos. Watch for beautiful colors that can light up the stadium. So use all of your lenses, even the wide angle, the mid telephoto and the longer zoom to help tell the story. Finally, something to keep in mind with the iPhone is that generally speaking, the newer the model, the better it will be in low light. One thing I found interesting was that I thought that the iPhone 15 Pro Max would have the same sensor as the iPhone 15, but it actually doesn't. The iPhone 15 does have a 48 megapixel sensor, but the actual sensor is about 22% smaller than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So the iPhone 15 might not be as good in low light situations. 
I wanted to do a comparison of my iPhone 15 Pro Max and my old iPhone 11 Pro. Here you can see the two iPhones in low light outside the stadium. At normal zooms, the iPhones are pretty similar. When I change them to a wide angle, the iPhone 11 is noticeably darker than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. There is almost no detail in the crowds. At two times zoom, you can see that the quality of the iPhone 11 Pro isn't as good as the iPhone 15 Pro Max. You can see artifacts in the iPhone 11 Pro. And finally, the iPhone 15 Pro Max has that five times zoom, which is fantastic for concerts. It makes a huge difference. So what is my recommendation? You know, well, I can see the benefit of both devices. An iPhone is a device that I can bring into the concert with me while you're not always allowed to bring in a compact camera like the Lumix. Now the iPhone 15 Pro Max has that five times zoom, which is equivalent to 120 millimeter lens, which was fantastic at helping me get closer. Um, it did a great job with capturing video and it allowed me to capture photos while also capturing video. And it was really easy for me to change the exposure of my photos and video, much easier than I, it was with the Lumix. Uh, so it held the advantage when it came to capturing video and the ease of changing the exposure of the photos and the videos. Now when it comes to the Lumix, the Lumix is just small and compact and it has this amazing 24 to 360 millimeter lens. It has a large one inch sensor, which is great in low light. That sensor is 20.1 megapixels, which is fantastic. Uh, it's across the zoom range, all the way from 24 to 360 millimeters. You only have that 48 megapixel sensor on the phone at the regular setting, not at the telephoto or at the wide angle. And so um, the Lumix held the advantage when it came to the qu image quality. It held the advantage when it came to the number of megapixels. It held the advantage when it came to the zoom. And it held the advantage in having that 20.1 megapixels across the whole zoom range. So does that mean I choose the Lumix? Actually, in most situations, I choose my iPhone. You know, it was just so much less work to use than my Lumix. Uh, my goal for a concert is to enjoy the concert, but my goal is also to capture great photos and videos. That's what I like to do. And I just, I wanna be able to relive the experience. Now the Lumix gave me great images. Uh, the video was a lot harder to do, but gave me great images. But I found that I, I had to, it was so much more work. And I found like I was concentrating on the camera as opposed to concentrating on the concert. So I needed to get the settings right and my attention was on this camera. With the iPhone, it was really easy. I could capture great photos, great video, maybe not as close, but you know what? I was concentrating on the concert, which was really important. Now I will say that if I'm really, 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 really far away, I would recommend using the Lumix because that'll give you that zoom, but I would recommend learning how to use the camera manually, exposure, uh, focus, everything manually um, beforehand, practice that beforehand. You know, I don't want to spend my whole uh, experience at a concert, I don't want to be looking at a lens or fiddling with a camera. I want to be able to enjoy the concert and the iPhone let me do that but still allowed me to capture some great photos and videos. And you know, sometimes I just need to put the, the camera down and sing along and that's what I could do when it came to the iPhone. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. And if you have any questions, please write them in the comments below. If you like the content I am creating, please consider subscribing.